body and Glenn is out the second. Okay, we'll start with this. Former WBA welterweight champion, Jordanis Ugas states, Thurman is one of the best fighters of our era. A fight with him would be one the fans would enjoy. Yeah, but who says he's willing to fight you? After seeing my doctor during my last visit, the x-rays came back, Ugas told BoxingScene.com in his first interview since Saturday's fight with Spence. He told me, I fortunately won't be needing surgery. My face is healing well and I'm getting better each day. In due time, I'll be back in the gym training as I feel I can get back to the top. For now, many in the sport are monitoring the progress in a potential undisputed championship bout between Spence, who now holds WBA, WBC, and IBF straps, and WBO titleist Terence Crawford. The winner will become the first welterweight to hold all four major belts, along with being in high demand for the rest of the division. Yeah, that's what people are waiting for. The undisputed title fight between them, though, there's a feeling that Terence Crawford may return to action before it comes to that, perhaps against Keith Thurman. Perhaps on pay-per-view. Keith Thurman already returned to action earlier this year against Mario Barrios after a two-year hiatus from the sport after having lost his WBA title to Mani Pacquiao. In that way, Keith Thurman's had his rebound fight. He fought Mario Barrios to a decision, and he's ready for something bigger. He's ready to get knocked out by Terrence Crawford. Because that's what'll happen if they fight. Yordanis Yugas is a 2008 Olympic bronze medalist for Cuba who resides in Miami and trains in Las Vegas. Plans to earn his way back to a second title reign. On his future hit list is a desired showdown with fellow former titleist Keith Thurman, who returned from a 30-plus month hiatus Jeez. with a 12-round win over Mario Barrios earlier this year. I just want to be in the biggest fights possible against the biggest names. The biggest names in the sport. Keith Thurman is one of the best fighters of our era, and I think a fight with him would be one the fans would enjoy. Yeah, maybe depending on how they bill it. But I don't think that Jordanis Ugas is on on Keith Thurman's radar right now. Not for this year. We're both warriors and bring a lot of excitement to the ring. Yugos won a secondary version of the WBA title in a September 2020 victory over Abel Ramos, receiving an upgrade to full champion last January. His lone successful title defense came in a career best victory, outpointing legendary Filipino Southpaw Manny Pacquiao. Over 12 rounds last August 21st at the T Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. You think Yugos fights again this year? Well, he he was reported to have suffered a fractured orbital bone in the Errol Spence Jr. fight. And while he says that there was no need for surgery and that the eye is healing well... I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't fight for the rest of the year. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Ugas sit out the rest of 2022 because it's not like Fox is staging very many fights. And who knows if they even stay in boxing beyond this year. The availability of fight dates over at Fox... There's a question there. There's a question as to whether or not Showtime can accommodate all of these PBC fighters that want to get out there. Uga seems to be one of them, though I do question as to whether or not he'll get back out there again this year and against who. He's got his sights set on a Keith Thurman fight. Keith Thurman has already expressed an interest in facing Errol Spence Jr. or Terence Crawford. So if at some point Keith Thurman and Jordanis Ugas are to cross paths, I don't get the sense it will be this year. And let's be honest, that is not a fight that at this time is in high demand. Given the financial demands of the fighters, they'd likely try to build that as a pay-per-view. Ugas versus Thurman ain't box office. Ugas versus Thurman don't belong on pay-per-view. And anybody telling you different is an idiot and a sycophant. Keith Thurman was just on pay-per-view with Mario Barrios, and they didn't release a set of preliminary numbers for that fight the way they just did for this fight between Errol Spence Jr. and Jordanis Ugas. The feeling is that if you actually had something to brag about... You'd be bragging about and it. And nobody was bragging about the metrics in relation 
Division Two, that fight, that pay-per-view. Ugas by himself, Thurman by himself. They ain't got much drawing power, and if you put them together... They still don't have much drawing power. The usual suspects, the usual go-to guys for viewing figures, Lance Pugmire, Mike Coppinger, they were eerily silent when it came to that Thurman versus Barrios fight. They didn't come out with a set of numbers by way of their sources. The only thing semblant of a number in relation to how that fight performed came to us by way of Rick Glacier. Glacier. Rick said the pay-per-view did well under 50,000 buys, and I believe him. Because fights like Thurman versus Barrios don't belong on pay-per-view. Neither does Thurman versus Yugos. That's the kind of fight to whiz. You stage it as a main event on regular old Showtime, or you decorate an undercard with it. A pay-per-view undercard. Hey, you could stick it on the undercard of a big pay-per-view, but that fight by itself as a main event? It's not box office. A fight like Ugas versus Thurman at its best is a redemption fight. A redemption fight for both fighters to where the operational costs aren't supposed to be that high anyway because in many ways, both guys are on the rebound. Yeah, Keith Thurman just won a decision over Mario Barrios, but he didn't knock him out. That guy just got knocked out at 140 pounds. You decisioned him at 147. So there's more work needs doing. You think about that and you think about you, Gus, and how he performed against Spence, or underperformed, I should say. A fight like Ugas versus Thurman, at its best, is intended to be a redemption fight where the operational costs aren't supposed to be that high to begin with because neither of you is box office. Not with each other. You need the right dance partner. And not that it matters. I don't actually anticipate that this fight will take place this year if it takes place at all. Yeah, I'd sooner expect to see Keith Thurman in there with Terrence Crawford before Ugas. Seems to be what most people are expecting at this point in the junk shore for what remains of 2022 this year. In other news, Canelo Alvarez had this to say. He says, I don't care about the fight with Golovkin. That fight will be for the people. And his own, who likely made it a sticking point for Canelo Alvarez. I didn't watch the fight, Alvarez said Wednesday during a conference call with a small group of reporters. I watched the highlights, but I didn't watch that fight yet. But he do what he was supposed to do when asked to elaborate upon why he didn't watch Golovkin versus Murata alive. Alvarez replied, I never watched the fights. Never, never. If Alvarez beats Bivol on May 7th at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, he is expected to drop back down to the super middleweight division to defend his IBF, WBA, WBC, and WBL 168-pound championships versus Golovkin on September 17th at a site to be determined. You know, he's probably telling the truth. It's not like he needed to watch that fight to gain any insights on how it is Gennady Golovkin operates. He shared the ring with the man two times. 24 rounds in there with that guy. Probably telling the truth. Doesn't need to watch the Murata fight to get the inside track on Gennady Golovkin. And that fight, depending on what part of the world Canelo Alvarez was in when it came on it was probably very early in the morning here stateside you had to get up at the crack of dawn to watch that thing probably telling the truth i'm 100 percent focused on bivol i don't care about the fight with golovkin alvarez said i'm 100 percent focusing on the bivol fight and then we'll see but the people want to see that fight right that fight will be for the people. Alvarez, 31, defeated Golovkin by majority decision in their 12-round rematch in September 2018 at the T-Mobile Arena. Whereas Alvarez is commonly considered the deserved winner of their second middleweight championship bout, the result of their first fight, a 12-round split draw, is widely viewed as controversial. Yeah, I had Golovkin win in the first fight. Canelo legitimately won the second. For whom it may concern. At least in my book, he did. Not impressed, Alvarez said. But he looked good. He looked strong. Strong, but I'm never impressed, so I'm never impressed about him. I know what he can do, and I know he's a strong fighter. I know what kind of fighter he is, but I'm not impressed because I know. Not much camaraderie between Gennady and Canelo. None at all, really. It's not like what you saw from Arturo Gatti and Mickey Ward after their fights, their trilogies. Those guys became bosom buddies. There was a bond there. That bond does not seem to exist between Canelo and Gennady. He's poo-pooing all over the fight. Not outright, but that's just of it. He says... He doesn't care about that fight. That fight is for the people, and you get the sense that this fight, this trilogy with Gennady, isn't necessarily something that Canelo Alvarez is crazy about, but he's doing it anyway. And maintain my original position, I think the people at the zone. I think they made fighting Gennady for a third time a sticking point. I think they gave Canelo Alvarez the kind of fiscal assurances that he was looking for, but I think in return, they want him to deliver them that fight. They've always been very committed to getting that fight over the line. Give a little to get a little. A compromise was reached between them to where Canelo Alvarez gets to make the kind of money he wants to make, but he has to provide them that assurance that he'll fight that guy for a third time because they've always been 
very committed to that fight. The fight's good for business. You ask a lot of people now, they might poo-poo all over the fight <laughs> the same way that Canelo Alvarez is poo-pooing all over the fight. But the day of... What do you think the boxing fans are going to be watching? You know, it reminds me of when Amir Khan versus Kel Brock's fight was officially announced. You saw a lot of people belly aching, moaning that the fight was past the sell-by date, too little, too late, all that jazz. But the day of the fight, commercially, it did very good business. Very good business at the box office, very good business at the gate. In spite of initial skepticism. Canelo Alvarez! Did something like a hundred thousand pay-per-view buys with a little-known champion that goes by the name Caleb Plant. A guy who had never fought on pay-per-view before, doesn't necessarily have very big following, certainly not the same kind of following that Gennady Golovkin had, that Gennady Golovkin still has. Gennady Golovkin is an international superstar. He's sold out in the United States, sold out in the United Kingdom. He was very recently in action in Japan. Big crowd, big reaction. Gennady Golovkin is so obviously more well-known than Caleb Plant. And if Canelo Alvarez in the dwindling American pay-per-view market could still put up 800,000 pay-per-view buys with a guy most people have never seen in action, a guy most people don't know, don't follow, if Canelo Alvarez, off his name and his name alone, his marquee value, if he can put up 800,000 pay-per-view buys with the likes of Caleb Plant, he could probably do the same as or better numbers with Gennady Golovkin, who is well-known. That's what the people at the zone are thinking. That the fight between them still has a lot of commercial value. The trilogy, I should say. The third installment. Canelo Alvarez's metrics by himself are through the roof these days. 73,000 in attendance to see him take on a little-known British import that just so happened to have a belt and Billy Joe Saunders. 73,000 people. They broke the indoor attendance record with that fight. And at a time when pay-per-views ain't moving like hotcakes, they ain't selling as good as they used to, Canelo Alvarez was still able to hit 800,000 pay-per-view buys. If anybody else fights that same Caleb Plant, do you think they do those numbers? No, the answer. So if Canelo Alvarez can come close to, at least come close to a million pay-per-view buys, just 200,000 buys short of that number, if he can come close to that number, with the likes of a Caleb Plant, what could he do with Gennady for the third time? That's the filter. That's the scope. DAZN sees the fight in. Still has a lot of commercial value. This will be the fifth fight of Gennady Golovkin's sixth fight deal with DAZN. The first fight on the platform he had was the Steve Rolls fight. The second was the Sergei Dirivienchenko fight. The third was Camille Zeremata. And the fourth, more recently, was the Ryota Murata fight. The Canelo Alvarez trilogy will be the fifth fight of his sixth fight deal. You think if he loses that fight, he's off the platform? I think that signing Gennady Golovkin to their platform for six fights, paying him what they've been paying him, has proven to be a very expensive situation for the people over there at the zone that didn't always yield a return. I mean, you're giving this guy $14 million for Steve Rolls, $14 million for Sergei Didivienchenko. The whole reason you cite that guy and you've been paying him what you've been paying him is for that third fight with Canelo. That's what it's all about. It's likely the only way they can get some of that money back because the spending is ridiculous. Could there be stipulations in Gennady Golovkin's existing contract to where if he loses a fight, it might affect what he makes moving forward? Could it void his contract altogether if he were to lose? to Canelo Alvarez in a trilogy because he's still got one fight left under that six-fight deal, regardless of what happens with Canelo in September. That will be the fifth fight of a six-fight deal. You don't want to have to keep paying this guy $14 million at a time to fight just any old buddy. Canelo doesn't care about the fight. He says it's for the people. I get the sense it's really for the zone. Yeah, I think they want it more than everybody. And finally, news broke yesterday that Gilberto Ramirez is going to be facing Dominic Bosell in a light heavyweight bout that headlines a May 14th to zone show. BoxingScene.com has confirmed that Gilberto Zerto Ramirez will headline a zone show on the date facing Germany's Dominic Bosell in a light heavyweight bout to air from the Toyota Arena in Ontario, California. The matchup was revealed during the two most recent DAZN shows, marking Ramirez's third main event on the sports streaming service. The winner of the scheduled 12-round fight will become the mandatory challenger for the WBA light heavyweight title at stake in Dimitri Bivol's title defense 
versus Canelo Alvarez on May 7th at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Boso and Ramirez are the two highest ranked contenders in the most recent set of WBA light heavyweight rankings. Ramirez enjoys his third fight in more than just 10 months since joining the Golden Boy promotion stable last spring. The former WBO super middleweight titleist is 4-0 four KOs since moving up to light heavyweight in 2019, with the last two fights taking place as a Golden Boy Promotions fighter. In his most recent start, Ramirez stopped former title challenger of Cuba, Unieski Gonzalez, in the 10th round last December 18th in San Antonio. The win came five months after his prior appearance in the Southern California region, scoring a fourth round knockout of veteran contender Sullivan Barrera last July 9th at the Bank of California Stadium in Los Angeles. Golden Boy Promotions Promotions has been keeping Zerto busy. Moving him up those WBA rankings to potentially corner either Dimitri Bivol or the winner of Bivol versus Canelo for a mandated title defense. That's the gist of it. That's why he's fighting this Dominic Bosell guy. It's not a high profile fight, but it's a necessary evil. Bosell will make his U.S. debut in what also marks a step up in Claus. The 32 year old former interim titleist has fought exclusively in Europe and mostly in his home country of Germany, including a 12 round split decision win over Robin Krasnicki in their rematch last October 9th in Magdeburg. Is that how you say that? The disputed victory saw Bosell avenge a third round knockout at the hands of Chris Nicky just two fights prior. Already scheduled for that evening are two other shows in the region. Jermel Trulot versus Brian Castaño meet in an undisputed junior middleweight championship rematch atop a Showtime card from Dignity Health. Sports Park in Carson, California. Also that evening, former light heavyweight titleist Sergey Kovalev will face Travel Pulev, the younger brother of Kubrat Pulev, in a cruiserweight fight headlining a thriller pay-per-view event from the Forum in Engel Wood, California. A lot of action that day in the West Coast. And it's safe to say that with the undisputed junior middleweight championship happening that same day, that fight, Zerto Ramirez won't have my undivided attention, if any of he it. He just needs to splatter this guy. I know it's a WBA final eliminator. That will see the winner of the fight crowned their mandatory challenger. I get that. But if Zerto actually wants his light heavyweight campaign to gain any traction, he needs to splatter this guy in such a way that it leaves an impression that he appears a legitimate contender because right now what he appears to be is a guy riding everyone else's wave. He's been calling out Dimitri Bivol for a long time. But according to Eddie Hearn, they already offered Zerto that fight before he jumped into bed with Golden Boy Promotions. And for what it's worth, I believe him. He says Canelo Alvarez stole the Bivol fight from him. Stole the Bivol fight? You mean the Bivol fight that Eddie Hearn already offered you? Zerto seems to aspire to become the winner of that fight's mandatory challenger. And if he does, that's another potential payday for Canelo Alvarez. A fight between Canelo and Zerto Ramirez in the West Coast could do very good business commercially, though make no mistake, Matchroom would bid aggressively for the rights to that fight. And Golden Boy Promotions... Golden Boy's not outbidding Matchroom. You can fucking forget it.